Hi guys, welcome back to Target Eyes. This is Neha Bolgum and we are on the fourth episode of our government scheme series of 2021. And today we are going to discuss about the schemes that have been introduced in the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and in the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying. I have amalgamated both of them into one video series because they are quite related to each other and I thought I would put them all in your head at the same time. So let's delve in. So under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, we today firstly have the National Agricultural Market, which has uh, recently come in news given the COVID-19 pandemic, where uh, uh, it has been introduced on a pan-India level as an electronic trading portal of the farmers produce. So um, by now you must be acquainted that we first discuss the name of the scheme, the objective of the scheme and the key facts that are to be included while understanding the scheme. So under the ENAM, which is the uh, Electronic National Agricultural Market, uh, as you have understood, this is a pan-India electronic trading portal which has been majorly launched to aid the farmers with the trading. It is a central sector scheme which means 100% central funding and the implementing agency of the scheme is the Small Farmers Agribusiness Consortium. Now this is a very important point, try to remember it from the prelims perspective. Now going further ahead into the infograph, the uh, project ENAM has been considered as uh, revolutionizing the Indian agriculture with its aim of doubling the farmer's income in five years. Now under this scheme, uh, we have the FPOs which are the farmer produce organizations uh, uh, which are made and managed by a group of farmers coming together. Now they trade their produce from the collection centers without bringing the produce to APMCs. So as already uh, most of you must be knowing with regard to the three farm bills that have been in discussion recently, the APMCs have continuously been in news and their elimination has been uh, considered as a major reform by the government. So here uh, the key features of the scheme include there will be one license for a trader that is valid across all markets in the state. And, uh, and for this the farmers do not have to get their produce primarily first to the APMC to trade but rather they can directly pick them up from the warehouses where there is no middlemanship or exploitation and they have one license throughout. So this also implies that there is this liberal licensing of both the traders and the farmers. Now until now uh, there have been 1000 markets across 18 states and, and 3 UTs. Now I know there are certain figures given here and here but I am providing you the updated figures that have been taken from the Ministry of agriculture and the farmers welfare and uh, the key feature to note here is that recently in the budget 2021 the government has announced uh, that they are trying to link thousand more mandis to the existing number of mandis that are across these 18 states and three UTs and next the benefits of this scheme to give to you as pointers are that it gives the freedom to farmers to sell in any mandi of their choice. It gives the freedom from local cartels by traders that you know depresses the prices where it is controlled by the middlemen. And it also facilitates for the discovery of best price and transparent sales process. And it has access to larger national market for secondary trading for farmers. Now all these points are quite important regarding the benefits of the ENAM project. So to sum it up, the main points here are that this has been mentioned in the budget uh, by announcing that they are expanding the number of Mondays available in per state. It has come in news under the COVID context where uh, the social distancing has become a norm and uh, the electronic connection of uh, national trading portal has become very vital. And then we have the transfer of APMC to warehouse uh, trading model uh, feature and these account for the benefits. Secondly, we have the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi which is uh, popularly called as the PM Kisan program. 
Now here, this is an income support program to all the eligible uh, farmer families. This is again a central sector scheme. And uh, the most important fact I felt to remember when it comes to this scheme is that there are certain exceptions. The income support is not to all farmers. For example, um, any institutional landholders who have uh, a, a, a concisable property under their holding and they do not need income support of the government. And um, any farmers who are holding constitutional posts or pay income tax, which means that they have their income to a certain extent where they are already paying income tax and they do not need any external social support scheme of the government such as the PM Kisan. So even under the Pradhan Mantri uh, Kisan scheme, the FPOs are promoted especially under the one district, one product cluster. So try and remember these slogans and which scheme they uh, come under because uh, the, the question might be as simple as the one district, one product slogan or ideology is associated with which of the following schemes and since under the Ministry of Agriculture you have many schemes such as the PM Kisan scheme, the Krishi Sanchai Yojana, Fazal Bhima Yojana, you might get confused with, the, uh, with which is associated with what. So try and uh, remember the key words when you come across a scheme. For example, that is why I'm giving the objective in such um, you know, few, numbered, few numbered words. So when you come across the uh, scheme PM Kisan, you have to remember that it is a income support scheme. And uh, when you come across the scheme Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana, you have to understand that it is an investment in the irrigation scheme. And here the slogan is more crop per drop, whereas here it is one district, one product. And when you read the scheme Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, you have to understand that it is the insurance scheme. So try and remember the key words like, you know, Fasal Bhima. Bhima means, you know, assurance and that is where you get the insurance scheme. And uh, Krishi Sanchai Yojana where, you know, it, it, it is about precision uh, irrigation. This word indicates this. So yeah, let's, let's get into one scheme at a time. I, I just thought I will tell you at the introduction of this because you're not just listening to what I'm saying, but also trying to remember the key terms as I go through the series. So coming back to the uh, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi, we have quite a few features that are important here. This being an income support scheme, uh, rupees 6000 have been provided per year for farmers and this has been uh, made available in installments of 2000 each. And now uh, the result is that around 10 crore farmers have been benefited from it. The scheme needs 100% Aadhaar authentication and as I told you it's a central sector scheme and not a central sponsored scheme which means it is 100% funded by the government and uh, the payment alerts are sent by um, via the SMS message alerting platform. Since I forgot to mention something at the start of the video, uh, up until now in the last three videos, we have been providing questions that are the prelims practice questions for the uh, UPSC 2021 examination, uh, depending upon the schemes discussed in the video to the end of the every video. Whereas uh, upon some suggestions from friends and students who have come across the videos, I have attempted to make the video more interactive and uh, you will be getting one prelims practice question after every two schemes that I discuss. Now since I have discussed the ENAM scheme and the PM Kisan scheme, let us head at the question that is based upon them. So after I read the question, I'll give a five seconds pause. Uh, try and make sense of the question. If you uh, do not understand it, maybe just go back to the slide, listen to what I've said again, or just read the key points that I have written and I'm sure you'll get there. So the first practice question for today is the Electronic National Agricultural Market Project plans on doubling farmers' income by following which of the following interventions. So does the ENAM scheme target at warehouse-based trading module or 
APMC based trading module or is it by increasing warehouse based and reducing APMC based trading module or is it a balanced approach of both the warehouse and APMC based trading module. Now if you can answer this I will confidently say that you have got the crux of the ENAM uh, scheme that we have just discussed above. Going ahead this third scheme is the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana which I have just mentioned above is uh, whose objective is about investments in irrigation at the field level. So the slogan for this is per more crop per drop and uh, the objective is to achieve this is through precision irrigation. This is uh, I will uh, going ahead I will explain what the word precision irrigation means and the facts uh, that come under the scheme are that it's a centrally sponsored scheme which means that the funding for the scheme is on a shared basis of the center and state and this is an interministerial scheme which means several other ministries are also a part of the implementation of the scheme. Now taking off from where I left let me show what interministerial scheme means. It is nothing but um, it is being formulated by amalgamating several ongoing schemes for more efficient uh, implementation of it. So the amalgamation of the schemes picked up from each of the ministries is there. The first one being the integrated water management program. The second one being the accelerated irrigation benefit program. And the last one is the on-farm water management which is a component of the national mission on sustainable agriculture. And under the umbrella Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sanchai Yojana, the water budgeting to, for the center and the state to invest into the irrigations have all been done separately for each sector that is namely the household the agriculture that is on the fields and for the industries. As I told you it is a central sponsored scheme. There are various funds that are involved into uh, fast tracking the implementation of the major incomplete areas within the project. So two of them are the long term irrigation fund and the second one is the micro irrigation fund. And both of them are under NABARD which is the Agriculture Oversight Bank. There are quite many facts to the scheme, I know that and that is why I am writing all of them down for you. Please you also parallelly make a note along with me so that you do not miss on any of the schemes when asked in the form of a question. And when it comes to monitoring the scheme, we have the National Steering Committee that is headed by the Prime Minister with Union Ministers of all the concerned ministries that are involved in the scheme to monitor it. And we also have the National Executive Committee under the chairmanship of the Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog. So under the National Steering Committee we have the monitoring taking place. Whereas the National Executive Committee, as it says in the name Executive, the implementation is being taken care of. And when it comes to other key features, rupees 50,000 crores have been invested to achieve the Harket Kopani uh, for ensuring the more crop per drop slogan. And we have the micro irrigation fund, which I have mentioned here. And we also have the, the farmers being facilitated for investing the solar water pumps in their irrigation fields. So these are all the key features that you have to remember in relation to the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sanchai Yojana and in achieving the precise irrigation. Next here we have the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana which I have told you. You can try and remember the key term as the insurance scheme. Now uh, this scheme has been introduced in a move uh, aiming at reducing the recurrence of the agricultural distress without having uh, to have a direct effect on the government revenue in form of heavy uh, minimum support prices. So as you know that India's agriculture is basically based on the monsoon and the water levels that are available underground. So there is a lot of instability uh, associated with it and uh, to overcome that and to not burden the government with uh, heavy promises made in the form of MSPs. So to reduce the burden here we have come across with this uh, stable crop insurance scheme which provides 50% uh, of the loss. And this again is a centrally sponsored scheme and is eligible for all the farmers and is a voluntary 
membership based scheme. Now this is my favorite infograph of all the things that we have discussed thus far uh, because of just the clarity it has come up with. All these infographs I'm picking up are from Transforming India which is again a government website. So feel free to make a visit there and uh, getting into the scheme. As I have told you, it's an insurance based scheme and let us understand why the scheme is in place. So firstly, as I told you, it is to uh, reduce the agricultural distress. And do you think this is the first scheme that is giving insurance um, with the crops to the farmers? No, we initially used to have the national agriculture insurance scheme but it has many flaws uh, because of which the new scheme has come into place and one of that is that there was a cap on the premium rating resulting in low claims. Yes, I understand what is this word premium. So let me explain that to you first. For example, in an insurance scheme, uh, the risk is being transferred from the insured to the insurer. So what is the insured and insurer. In this case, in this case of the Fasal Bhima Yojana, the insured is the farmer and the insurer is the government. So as the government is assuring the farmers to cover for the laws, it is taking the risk from the farmers and upon to them. And for this risk that the government takes upon, it charges an amount called as the premium. And the problem with the previously uh, introduced National Agricultural Insurance Scheme was that there was a capping on this, uh, the premium that was provided to the farmers uh, because of which the claims on the scheme as a whole was low because the farmers uh, that were getting back the money that was insured was very low in comparison to the losses they were facing. Whereas in this uh, Fasal Bhima Yojana, this cap has been removed and farmers will get full claim against the insured amount. Along with that, another key feature is also that the technology uh, under this scheme has been doubled and is to be used very intensively. Now going ahead and getting uh, into the important features of the scheme, as you have understood what a premium rate is, under the new scheme that has been introduced in the year 2016 from the car of season, the premium paid by the farmers has been reduced to 2% for the car of crops and 1.5% for the rabbi crops. Because before that, these charges were almost from 3.5% to 8% under the National Agricultural Insurance Scheme. And this is a relief. And the slogan for this scheme again is very important, it is the one crop, one rate scheme. And another benefit to the farmers under the new crop insurance scheme is that the losses incurred by them at any stage of the farming are covered, which means from the sowing to the post harvest season would be covered. As mentioned here, which means as fully insured and the premium rates are very low, which has been discussed here. It makes agriculture remunerative because of the losses that have been adjusted by the government and it is a boost to the agriculture and farmers welfare which is the key objective. Second prelims characters question for the day is that under the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana the farmer had to pay a uniform rate of premium for all crops. And the removal of the cap on the premium means farmers will get claim against full sum insured without any reduction. Mind you, read the sentences again at a slow speed and try to answer them. The question is that which of the above sentences are correct. So for the fifth and sixth schemes that are to come up next in the video discussion, I have chosen the theme that is organic farming. As uh, you know, it's everywhere in India. People are trying to shift uh, to eating healthy and in the process they are trying to pick up uh, produce that is organically uh, produced rather than by the aid of fertilizers and chemicals and pesticides. And uh, as you know recently, uh, the state Sikkim and also the Union Territory Lakshadweep just a week ago I think has been announced for being the first state and the first Union Territory in India for going uh, totally organic. And uh, the funny fact is that this is right for India because India is one of the oldest civilizations for having introduced organic farming to the world right from the Indus Valley Civilization and uh, thereupon. 
So keeping this backdrop in mind, the government has uh, recently launched two schemes. One is the Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana and the second is for the Northeastern region, which goes by the name Mission Organic Value Chain Development Scheme. Let's go ahead and discuss them. Under the Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana, which is a mixture of the traditional wisdom and modern science in value chain mode, uh, aiming to install sustainability and long-term soil fertility um, in the process of ensuring organic farming. And here I would like to mention certain organic area selection criteria under the first scheme. Firstly is that under the scheme, the organic farming will preferably be promoted in the hilly tribal rain-fed areas where utilization of chemical fertilizers and pesticides is less and the area has accessibility for developing market linkages since it is underdeveloped until now. And the second one is that it is famously tested and successful cluster approach based in uh, adopting large patches up to 1000 hectares of land and uh, with the amalgamation of several farmer families coming together and producing and later the equal distribution of the profits they gain from it and um, we also have the gram panchayat based FPOs that is the farmer produce organizations uh, to promote the trade under the scheme. And the subsidy offered under the scheme for farmers will uh, maximum be eligible for one hectare. And uh, what does this new word cluster mean? It is uh, just that in any cluster, that means a group of farmers, at least 60 per 65% of them from, must be from the small and marginal or the women farming community that is being supported by the self-help group in other communities. So based on this ideology, we have 19,043 clusters formed with almost 3.81 lakh hectares area covered. And um, with the success rate it has been achieving, the phase two has also been initiated in the 2019 to 2020 uh, budget. Now moving ahead, we also have the second scheme that is the Mission Organic Value Chain Development for the Northeastern region. Since as I have told you, the first state in India to go organic is Sikkim and it is in the Northeastern region. The special feature for this is that it is a central sector scheme, which means for the Northeastern region, it is 100% funding by the center, which is not in the case of the above scheme. And uh, here almost uh, 100 and above crores have been released with around 28,000 hectares to be covered. And this has also entered into the phase two in the year 2019 and 20 and here the farmer interest groups along with the farmers produce companies will be equipped with collection, aggregation, post harvest process and linking with the market facilities and etc. And these are the number of groups that are involved. A scheme, a simple scheme, I have made the third question not to be a brain teaser. So uh, from the, the facts that I've just stated after Sikkim, uh, from the following list, which place also took to be 100% organic? Chandigarh, Assam, Goa, Lakshadweep. Drop your answer below and let's go ahead. So the seventh scheme for today is the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Mandhan Yojana. This is an old age pension scheme. Again, a key uh, term in the scheme's uh, heading is Mandhan Yojana, which gives you a certain idea of self-respect and to ensure that the farmers have certain self-respect this is an old age pension scheme that is introduced especially for the small and marginal farmers in the country and the facts or the eligibility criteria here is only for the SMF uh, farmers who own cultivable lands up to two hectares and uh, they must sign up for this scheme between ages 18 to 40 years. So here is the infograph for the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Mandhan Yojana. It has been launched recently in the year 2019, which is why we are discussing it in today's video. And uh, as I told you, this uh, scheme is eligible 
for the farmers to enter between the ages 18 to 40 and they should only have cultivable land up to 2 hectares and this is um, a monthly contribution based scheme where the farmers have to pay up rupees uh, 55 to 200 depending upon their age of entry, their capacity and etc. until they reach 60 years and uh, after they do this the highlight of the scheme is that they get an assured monthly pension of 3000 rupees after attaining 60 years and uh, here a bonus feature is that uh, the spouse of the farmer is also eligible to get a separate pension of rupees uh, 3000 by um, upon paying separately under the same scheme that is if the farmer pays 55 rupees the government also contributes 55 rupees from their end so the result of the scheme is that uh, an enrollment of 20 lakh farmers is uh, being noted up until the year 2020 which means this is a very recent figure and uh, another feature is that the exit option is voluntary but given that they exit or, or opt to exit after at least a minimum period of five years and uh, of course their return would be given back by the LIC with an interest rate of course that is uh, uh, relevant or equivalent to the prevailing saving banks rates. And lastly, we have the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana, which is under the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying. The objective of the scheme is that it enables sustainable and responsible development of fisheries sector in India and it is being implemented for a period of five years that is from 2021 to 2025. Now the scheme was announced in the budget of 2020 which is aiming to have a systemized blue revolution achieved with the proper vision um, at every step throughout the process. And here the, the inputs under its vision is that it aims to address the critical gaps between the fish production and productivity, the quality of the fish produced for domestic consumption and export, the aspect of technology used in this, the post-harvest infrastructure, traceability, modernization and strengthening of the value chains which is a key factor where, which is what he meant by addressing the gaps between the fish production and the productivity so that the, produ the produce is not, has not gone to waste. So all of these are again achieved by uh, the fisheries clusters which ensure forward and backward uh, linkages. So backward linkages here means that connecting with the farmers who um, undertake the fisheries and animal husbandry and etc. and linking them with the forward linkages that is with the uh, supply chains and etc. So under this scheme along with ensuring all these uh, factors an important feature would also be uh, generating more employment to about 15 lakh uh, fisheries and fish farmers. This is a very important feature given uh, the long coastline that India has um, utilizing that to benefit the farmers and creating employment within the primary sector will aid to the overall GDP that has been contributed towards the nation. This is where the doubling of the farmers' incomes comes in and uh, this also adds to the GVA, the gross value added and without saying it also goes that the exports of the fisheries will also increase as India is known for its fisheries exporting sector and uh, 
This scheme will be implemented as an umbrella scheme with two separate components that is namely the central sector and also the centrally sponsored scheme. Now this is a unique feature that I haven't come across in any of the pre-existing schemes as um, coming under the central sector scheme the project cost will of course be borne by the government but also the sub uh, the subcomponents since this is a very uh, humongous scheme and uh, given the vast coastline and numerous states that come along with it, it uh, also has to be micromanaged at the state level and all these subcomponents and their functioning will be taken care by the state and the UTs with the cost sharing done between the centre and the state. Thus we have come to the last practice question of the day at the end of discussing all the important and recent schemes for the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and etc. And the question being, consider the following statements regarding the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Mandhan Yojana. This is a voluntary and contributory pension scheme that is welcome for all farmers and it makes a biannual payment of rupees 3000 to them on attaining the age of 60 years. The question is again choose the correct answer using the code below which is one only, two only, both, neither. So wrapping up for the day, let me take you guys uh, through the uh, schemes that we have discussed by briefly touching upon them. The, the first one being the ENAM scheme which is the All India level electronic trading portal of the farmers produce. The second one being the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi which is the Pradhan Mantri Kisan scheme which is an income support scheme providing 6,000 rupees to the farmers annually. The third one being the Krishi Sinchai Yojana, which is regarding the precision irrigation with uh, investments in the irrigation and the, uh, you know, having more crop per drop. And the fourth one being the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, which is the crop insurance scheme. The next being the uh, schemes related to organic farming, the Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana and the Mission Organic Value Chain Development for the Northeastern Region. One point you have to remember is the uh, second scheme alone being the Central Sector Scheme. And the seventh scheme is the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Mandhan Yojana, which is the Old Age Pension Scheme. And lastly, we have discussed the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana, which aims in aiding the Blue Revolution that India is aimed to take up in the next five years. So that's it guys, thank you for watching the video. Please let me know your feedback in the comment section below and also try and attempting uh, the answers that I have given through the video. I hope it was interactive. Let's meet next week in another video. Bye.